Guys, have you played the new Resident Evil uh, demo? I have. Yes. Tell me about it. Let's do a little review. I enjoyed it. Um, it's uh, mostly because of uh, it's about the polar opposite of Resident Evil 6 in terms of scope and, uh, you know, um, horror ambitions as well as gameplay technicality. Um, of course, there's a lot we don't really know about the game still. Um, and I'm a little disappointed that it's like it doesn't really escape their design aesthetics of creepy house. You can still see like stuff, some horror elements that are in the Resident Evil 7 demo that were in like things like Resident Evil 4. It's like, oh, they've just been left a crock pot full of cockroaches and shit laying on this table for two months. Of course, that makes sense. And they're still doing that stuff. I guess that's just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's the deal with that. But um, uh, but otherwise, I applaud this as a step in the right direction. And I thought it was reasonably compelling as a bit of storytelling. Uh, the thing about this, Blake, you only played it once here, maybe in 20 minutes. I played it multiple times, and there are a lot of ways to get the uh, to, to get done with the demo. The thing about it is the demo is so restricted. There's no like random possibility that you might get a game over, or that you may get uh, you get to certain points and you will get the same uh, jump scare. There, there's no random uh, thing going on. Just like uh, like I was talking to Blake about in Resident Evil 3, you have Nemesis chasing you around, and some of the encounters were random depending on what you did. Like, there's no threat of something coming after you, making you feel scared after you're done the first time. You pretty much know what you're, what, what's going on the second time. So it doesn't, it feels very restrictive, like they're making you go a certain way in the game to get the ending. It doesn't feel like, the, the, only, the, the actual scary part is getting through the first time. So no, he has multiple endings. There's no reward after going the second time. It feels like you're just on a little uh, haunted house ride. You're stuck on a rail, kind of. You can't go any other. If it feels like you're not, you're not switching to the uh, to the other rail to actually experience the whole demo, I suppose. Now, I, I read something about a, there being a finger, something being significant about a finger in the demo. Yeah. Well, it. it the, in the demo, that finger doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything. So you That's find it. You can you can try it any way you want it. It doesn't do anything. Uh, multiple times, it it's just not gonna do anything. Uh, uh, I did hear I did hear uh, uh, Capcom saying that the finger is gonna play a role in a next demo. But right now, unless you have a uh, a PS4 and but in PS Plus, you're not going to be able to enjoy the demo. But I, I, did, I did like the direction that we're going through with the uh, first-person view, which it's uh, it restricts you from what you're seeing. You know, you do not see what's behind you, so that's that's the whole like scary thing about it. You you only see what's in front of you, what's on, the, on your uh, peripheral vision. Yeah. And it's yeah, I think there was a great call to go first-person. Was it? But I will say that I, I, I wonder if, if uh, the PC and the Xbox One are going to get a demo because Resident Evil 7 is coming out for PC and Xbox One at the same time. So I'm, I'm guessing they're just doing this because PlayStation VR is coming out soon. And maybe I, I know at E3 they said that this would be one of the main uh, PlayStation VR games. So do you think that's right now that's why you can only get it on PlayStation Plus and uh, PS4? It does seem like they certainly have a deal going on with yeah. Capcom and PlayStation. To get a little off subject here, what is up with Capcom just like repackaging their their entire games? Like essentially, an, except for Resident Evil 2 and 3, right now I know on the PS4 and the Xbox One you can buy all the other Resident Evils. Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil uh, Remake. Um... Resident Evil 5, Resident Evil 6. Well, like, that, that's the hot topic right now, buying all these HD remastered games. They even did that with The Last of Us when, like, 
maybe wasn't even a year after it came out and came like before it came out. They had an HD version of it. So that seems like the whole thing going on. Like God of War did that uh, for the Xbox, Gears of War, yeah, uh, Halo. Halo. So it seems yeah. like the hot trend right now is to upgrade the graphics and to get a new demographic of uh, of players. But I, I don't. I just don't get that with particularly with uh, RE5 and RE6 because on PS3 and Xbox 360 they were already in high definition. Well, sure. I suppose that's the uh, the thing is that they were on PS3 and Xbox 360 because these uh, remasters are corresponding with generational upgrades. Yeah. With you know the capacities and um, and I suppose it's the fact that they're not backwards compatible that they'd be re-releasing them. Um, otherwise, you know, it's a yeah, it's a cash yeah. grab. I mean, yeah, uh, especially I if you own like, I just saw they they just put up Dead Rising, like the trilogy. So Dead Rising and Dead Rising Two are on the marketplace for you to buy. And if you own an Xbox One, you're mad because you know the only reason, and the only reason, uh, that Dead Rising One and Two are not backwards compatible yeah. is because Capcom wants to make money. I mean, just look at it, like, it did this, and, like, the Resident Evil 7 demo is getting over, like, a million downloads. Yeah. I'm excited for... So it's just yeah. working for them. Yeah, it's, uh, and I heard, I think Ari's uh, Resident Evil 0 and Resident Evil Remake, like, that bundle that they made, I heard that made a lot of, they, they've sold, like, over a million of those. Oh, Resident Evil 0 and 1, yeah, definitely, yeah. and I'm one of those people that bought both of those. So, uh, so. so, yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely making bank. But uh, they, they have said that Resident Evil 7 is going to be a continuation of 6. Where do you think, uh, where do you guys speculate the uh, Resident Evil world is, is at right now? I feel like it's secured areas where the, the things with the, uh, the Ouroboros and the Ganados uh, have been resolved. Like, I feel like it's just normal people fighting what's left over of this disease mm. or this virus or, or like what you call like a plague or a parasite at this point with the plagas. So I, I feel like it's normal people fight against this because it, it, it wouldn't be much fun at this point making Leon or Chris or Jill a person that's, or people that are basically uh, veterans, like biohazard materials and and zombies and all that, making them fight in one. Basically, they have the advantage. Only not that they cannot punch their way out of this. Um. I yeah. I also think it's uh, if it is within a canonical continuation of the Resident Evil series, it's got to be some kind of mop up phase. Uh, not sure how long uh, afterward. I know in the demo that um, your protagonist is the cameraman of a uh, kind of a ghost hunters. A uh, show. Um, uh, <laughs> what what what's scarier than ghosts? How about real life monsters? I don't know if uh, ghosts are, are that scary anymore. Especially in a, in a Resident scary. Evil world. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like oh wow, this is a really niche market. Uh, <laughs> how about you show like dog humans or something? Yeah. I, I, it does, it does feel like this uh, Resident Evil demo took a lot from uh, the PT demo. But not enough for it to be rewarding, um, as, as far as like uh, the, the scare factor. I'm still excited for it, but as far as where I wanted to speculate was what I was thinking was that, like you said, they're they're just kind of mopping up whatever's left over, like the the main characters and all that. And then I'm thinking this could be an isolated event because they're out in the middle of nowhere. What if this is just someone who's creating monsters in the middle of nowhere no one no one knows about it you know and i, I would, well the, uh, uh, have you seen the entire demo like have you uh, seen multiple playthroughs of the demo i've only seen one playthrough okay the, uh, if you play multiple times there's this operation maybe a ghost maybe it's a monster that randomly appears on your screen up to maybe five times like you uh, you see it at random times in the game I don't know if it's a ghost. Uh, it's uh, like if you got through the ending of uh, the game where the guy's trying to cut your rope and he uh, gets killed. It's that uh, the, the girl or the woman that stabs him. 
it's her, but uh, she appears uh, briefly throughout different instances once you finish the game. It's, it's not like she makes a significant, like a difference in the in the play of the game. It's more like a uh, uh, like a scare tactic, like a jump scare, basically, when you see a glimpse of her. I'm glad it looks like, hopefully, hopefully, they're going with a new cast of characters or something like because it, it just ultimately like like what you guys said it's it's not really a threat to the main cast and eventually you need to let your characters in the story either ride off into the sunset or or you kill them you know eventually they're going to get bland and and stale like i would say chris scott and dare i say leon um have gotten i feel personally when i got to re6 i didn't I, I I cared about Chris and I thought he was going to die and when he didn't die I was just like oh this is boring. You've spent way too much time with these yeah. characters. Uh, almost twenty years with Chris. That's how I felt like RE6. If you play it for the first time, at least for me, I kind of felt like oh this is Chris's last mission. It feels like you know he's going to sacrifice himself and when he didn't, I was just like oh god. It would have been a lot better if uh, he died instead of uh, Pierce, which was yeah. the new upcoming and more likable character than Chris. And Pierce the, was likable? I like Pierce a lot more than I did probably any other character in that, uh, in Bull 6. Yeah. I liked uh, Sherry, and I, I was okay with Jake. He was a little bit too overpowered, though, I think, as, <laughs> as a character. I don't think... Uh, um, Anyone has mentioned uh, the the, part, the name that no one seems to be able to remember of Leon's partner in that game. Oh, her? Um, oh, gosh. I, I can't yep. remember her name. Amelia? Something like that? I just figured she, she suffered from the same syndrome as the character from RE5. You know, I'm just a sidekick for this game and you'll never see me again. What, so, Shiva? Yeah. She actually had a role. Like She, she had a... Uh, a an emotional investment other oh, than no 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 i'm not saying that she's uh, i wasn't saying she's throwaway uh, she was important for re5 but like capcom has a history of doing this remember billy from resident evil zero or uh, was it carlos from resident evil 3 it's just like they'll have these characters that play an important role in that game but then after that game they're never mentioned again or they, they might be mentioned offhand. It's like a, a Terminator plot, like where they keep uh, everything in the back pocket to bring something else up and try to make force it. Yeah. To make sense. So it seems like it seems like that. Like there, uh, I don't know if you know this. There's gonna be a new uh, CGI Resident Evil movie, and Rebecca's gonna be in it. Oh yeah, I forgot about there's another one, Rebecca. Jesus. Oh, I, joy. I didn't like they. They just they just kind of mentioned her in two and who else was it? Ada? Ada's the one that I uh, I think in RE six that I was still interested in because I didn't feel like you got to the bottom of her. Uh, oh, Ada's meant to be a mystery. Yeah, she she's definitely meant to be the um, the mysterious character because even in the movies or uh, like in uh, there, there was a CGI movie which she was involved with with Leon. Yeah. Uh, she didn't like. You don't know what she's up to. It seems like she's playing uh, both sides at this point. Uh, but usually, she seems like she's fairing Leon. At every single instance, she's she's trying to keep Leon safe. I, I felt like we got close to finding out who she was though in, in six, but then she just kind of like took a phone call at the end of her story and is like, oh, I'm on the mission, and then they ended it. And I'm like, what? You, we got so <laughs> close to figuring out who you were. Now it's just, it's, it's gone. So. And that, is, and that is one kind of storytelling thing that I am quite glad that, well, I think at least that Resident Evil's getting away from. It's like, oh, there's always someone behind the curtain. It's like yeah. Every game is going to be the next person behind the curtain, and it's always going to be a curtain behind that person. Yeah, and it is always going to be in on in on the know. They still have all their resources that are completely accessible to one a Wesker. So you you guys definitely said it's it's worth the download. It's worth a shot. Do you think? Do you guys think it's worth a pre order right now for anyone who has a Xbox One or PS Four? My honest opinion on it will be wait. If if they pan out and there's a next demo, wait for it. 
if you if you enjoyed the demo right now, go ahead, make your pre order. If you didn't, wait it out, wait it out, and wait to the next demo. If you're on the fence, wait to the next demo. Because they're, they're they're about to solve some things with the uh, the the gameplay and uh, with the with the demo, you couldn't attack or uh, you couldn't defend yourself. And they already said they're that they're making your character actually be able to defend himself. Uh, what about for say someone who is a Resident Evil fan but doesn't have a PS4, so he can't play the demo? Should I should I go ahead and pre-order Resident Evil Seven? Uh, I would I would my honest opinion as a Resident Evil fan would say to wait it out, wait, wait out to the demo. yeah to to, to you're able to play the demo and make your own conclusion about it. If you think five and six were right decisions for the series, then don't buy seven. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks they that those do. were right decisions? <laughs> I was okay with five because I thought five was the end and then six came out and I was like, oh god, what did they do? Yeah, you think it would end in a volcano, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's like you're standing in a in, in a mansion lobby in one. It's like, you know how I think this will end? <laughs> in an African volcano. With Chris on roids punching the shit out of a boulder. Exactly. I mean, that's like the sort of the logical progression. I think that's in like the hero's journey. That you know. <laughs> I mean, it was Cameron's so it, it was so it was so over the top. It is it is the ending of probably the best villain in the rest of evil game so far. Which in six, the villains were very forgettable. It looked like it takes place in like Louisiana or something like that. So it's another s southern it, zombie. But isn't the bayou scary? You wouldn't want those zombies learning hoodoo now. <laughs> yeah. You don't want those gators eating you right now, don't you? You don't want no gator getting that C virus now. No, <laughs> hell no. They're going to turn you into a old boy snack. The, the, the main character is going to be Rusty from, uh, from True Detective. Rust Cole. Yeah. Oh, look out. It's a 30 foot pelican. It is with eight rounds. God damn it. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I, I'm excited for it. Uh... Hey guys, 2 bit here. Just wanted to say thanks for watching. And if you really enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Now, if you want to watch more 2 bit reviews, click the video on the left. And if you enjoy discussing and debating the latest topics in gaming and geek culture in general, click the link on the right to check out our 2 bit podcast videos. And if you'd like to join the 2-Bit community, click the subscription button in the corner. That way you won't miss a thing. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching.